The contents of this video are for educational purposes and are not intended to offer personal nutrition or medical advice. Please seek the advice of your dietitian or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding sugar sweetened beverages and its health effects. Recent guidelines recommend limiting free sugars from all food and beverages to less than 10% of the total energy intake in order to reduce the associated health hazards. Free sugars include table sugars, brown slash white, and other sweetening agents added to foods and drinks by food manufacturer, as well as naturally present sugars in honey and fruit juice. There is strong evidence linking intake of sugar-sweetened beverages SSBs, with weight gain and risk of type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, hypertension, cardiovascular disease risk factors, and other metabolic conditions, such as gout. Sugars naturally found in fruits and vegetables, and in milk and milk products, have lower or no risk of health hazards. Sugar-sweetened beverages are any liquids that are sweetened with various forms of added sugars. These added sugars include brown or white sugar, dextrose, glucose, fructose, lactose, corn syrup, among others. Examples of SSBs include, but are not limited to, regular soda, not sugar-free, fruit juice drinks, sports drinks, energy drinks, sweetened waters, and also coffee and tea beverages with added sugars. Other sugary drinks may include sweetened water, flavored water, coffee, and tea. High fructose corn syrup is a commonly added sugars in processed foods and has been shown to drive health problems. Because of the danger of sugary drinks, the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion Act was signed into law in December 2017. And, by January 2018, the Philippines began imposing a tax on sweetened beverages. However, it is not only the beverages with added sugars were taxed, but also low-calorie sweet beverages. The retail price increase, for example, is about 13% for every liter of regular cola, and about 26% per liter of cola, made with high fructose corn syrup. There is growing base of evidence to suggest that sugar-sweetened beverage taxation can be a cost-effective means of addressing the growing threat of non-communicable disease in low- and middle-income countries. It should be noted that the calories in sugary drinks can be high and provide little or no nutritional value. You may be surprised to learn how much added sugar is in the typical can of soda or fruit juice or iced tea that you have been drinking. For instance, a 12-ounce soda contains about 9 teaspoons of sugar, while a cup of juice, about 8 ounces, provides similar amount of sugars. The following examples can help you visualize just how much sugar is in your favorite drink and other popular beverages. So, what's wrong with too much intake of sugar? High intake of sugary drinks has been linked to many illnesses, such as dental caries, overweight and obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart-related diseases and possibly cancer. Dental caries Sugar drinks can cause tooth erosion or loss of dental hard tissue. Soda or soft drink, for instance, contain high levels of phosphate and too much phosphate in the body can badly affect the teeth and bones. Weight gain. Too much sugar can contribute to weight gain, which can lead to obesity and diabetes. In a review of various studies, it was found that high intakes of sugary drinks in children and teenagers are linked to increased weight, body mass index, waist measurement, and amount of body fat. 
too much sugary drinks, can also impair the body's ability to control sugar in those with diabetes. In a review of several studies, researchers found that habitual consumption of sugary drinks, or SSBs, was linked to higher risks of type 2 diabetes, independent of obesity. This is whether people have obesity or not. Additional data showed increased drinking of sugary beverages, including fruit juices, is connected with risk of type 2 diabetes. Experts also revealed that maintaining low intakes or decreasing consumption of sugar drinks to low intake, whether they contain added or natural sugars, is linked to a lower diabetes risk. In the same study, results do not suggest that consuming artificially sweetened beverages ASBs, in place of sugary beverages is associated with significant benefits related to diabetes risk on heart disease. Too much sugary drinks in the diet can increase your blood fats, triglycerides, that can lead to heart disease. In the study in the US, sugar sweetened beverage intake was connected to lower good cholesterol and increased in blood fats which may contribute to heart disease. On a positive note, experts reported that drinking of low-calorie sweetened beverages and limited amounts of 100% fruit juice, up to 1.5 servings per day, do not appear to adversely influence blood cholesterol and blood fats concentrations. In another review of several studies, high consumption of sugary drinks, or SSBs, increases blood pressure and hypertension risk in children and teens. SSB and bone health. Too much sugary drinks can increase calcium and magnesium loss in the body. Analysis of a number of studies have shown that too much soda and sugary coffee have adverse effects on bone health. It was also found that too much intake of sugar in the diet has the potential to increase osteoporosis risks. There are a number of possible ways on how sugar can affect bones negatively. Too much sugar intake can cause more calcium and magnesium loss in the urine, both minerals are important in bone health. Also, sugar can lower absorption of calcium in the body, and it can lead to poor bone repair. Sugary drinks and fatty liver Too much sugary drinks, especially those containing high fructose corn syrup, contributes to fat deposits in the liver, leading to fatty liver disease. There are evidence to show that high intake of sugary drinks is linked to greater risk of developing fatty liver disease. So, what can you do now? Know your limits. In general, 20 to 25 grams of sugar is recommended for the whole day by the World Health Organization. More specifically, children, 1 to 6 years of age, should limit their sugar consumption from 4 to 5 teaspoons of sugars, or about 20 to 25 grams per day. You can check the food labels of sugary drinks, as to the amount of sugar it contains per serving. For children, 7 to 19 years of age, the recommended intake is about 5 to 6 teaspoons, or about 25 to 30 grams per day. Adults can consume about 5 to 8 teaspoons of sugar per day. This is about 25 to 40 grams. Seniors or the elderly people have to trim down their sugar consumption to 4 and up to 6 teaspoons per day. What else can you do, aside from knowing your limits, when it comes to sugar intake per day? One way is to cut back on sugar, one drink at a time. Also, switch to no sugar or low calorie alternatives. Here are some tips on how to cut back on sugar consumption. Choose water. Water is the best choice for quenching your thirst. If you find plain water is boring or flat, you can add one quarter half cup of 100% juice to sparkling slash seltzer water or add some freshly squeezed lemon or orange juice to plain water or sparkling water go natural choose 100% fruit juice or low sugar milk 
Fruit juice contains natural sugars and vitamins. But, it can be high in calories, from concentrated fruit sugars. If you are drinking milk. Note that, there's no need to drink more than a glass or two of milk daily. Watch out for some types of milk powder, with a lot of sugar content. Make your own unsweetened iced tea, with decaf tea bags or herbal tea bags. Choose low-calorie drinks, such as diet soda or sugar-free sport drinks, or sugar-free flavored water. However, moderation, is still important. Why need to keep it in moderation? Research suggests that artificially sweetened drinks may still contribute to weight gain. This is because, sweet diet drinks, may condition you to crave other sweet drinks and foods. Always mind your health and wellness. Practice moderation in everything.